We're on the uh, Nottaway River in, uh, in southeastern Virginia. And this is a sample of the bottomland hardwood forest in this area. Uh, there's, you're going to see a lot of different looks on this um, on this workshop as we go to different areas of the state. But this is one particular um, blackwater type uh, bottomland hardwood forest. And you can see the cypress trees here with the cypress knees that are put up, which indicates uh, that this soil is. Uh, saturated or underwater for probably four to six months out of the year. Obviously you can see that condition now. This is April the 8th. Uh, so looking down here in the detritus or duff layer, you see evidence of some other seeds. You see some oak catkins that have fallen. I also see a hickory nut from a carrier species, another hickory nut, oh slime, slime from a gastropod, maybe known as a slug, or a snail. Or a snail. Gotta keep in mind the snails. Fair amount of organic material which is deposited here slowly decaying, which provides a lot of surface area for slowing and cleaning water. So decomposition is also very important to the overall ecosystem. And there are many animals and plants that take part in that process. From fungi to the mosses to the termites and other decomposing bugs that may break down these logs. And here you see an earthworm that has made its way all the way up into this decomposing tree from the ground. Vernal pools are areas where water stands throughout the winter and spring but dries in the summer. Life in vernal pools springs forth early as fairy shrimp, water fleas, and other invertebrates come to life. This is followed by the salamanders, frogs, beetles, springtails, flies, mosquitoes, and so many species of fauna which depend on the variation of time, temperature, and nutrients that the water provides. You can also see how dark the water is. Why is the water that dark? Very shallow water. Very dark because of the tannins from the trees and the decaying matter. In areas where perhaps you don't have a body of water, there are often places where you have the an uprooted tree which will serve this same purpose as a small vernal pool. Here, of course, you can also see a cloud of mosquitoes Yay! that also love this same environment. Hey, look! Provide a great food source for the amphibians Frogs. as they come along. And then the amphibians provide a good food source for Keyboard. birds, snakes, and other variety of wildlife. Oh, the reason for vernal pools are the egg masses of amphibians. Why do you know they're amphibious? And the reason 
that rental pools are very important. The amphibians are able to breed here in the water. So you lay their eggs in water and then once they develop, go from gills to lungs, they come up on land. And so this is the area of the forest where the water meets the land. And so a great place for amphibians. Also because there are no fish in the pond, able to avoid the primary predators. Spotted salamanders, Amblystoma maculatum, emerge from the ground and migrate, often by the hundreds, to their breeding pools. Plainly visible in the jelly of the salamander eggs are algae of a species known as Euphelia amblystomatus, which translates in Latin to love of salamander eggs. In this symbiotic relationship, the algae contribute oxygen and remove waste, while the ammonia waste from the embryo creates a nitrogen-rich environment, which is ideal for the algae's own metabolism. Also sharing the same environment are many species of frogs, crayfish, turtles, and snakes that all make up the vital strands in the forest's wetlands food web. Bridging the gap from the water and soil to the air are structures such as this dead snag, which becomes the substrate upon which many species of beetle larvae invade, which then become part of the all-you-can-eat avian buffet. Nutrient-rich bugs aren't the only things climbing towards the sunlight. Vines of various species also utilize the scaffolding structures of the tree trunks to grab a few rays. This hairy vine clung tightly to the tree bowl is telltale, and if we find the leaves, you will clearly see the leaves of three, so let them be. This is poison ivy, Toxicodendron radicans. There are quite a number of other vines in the forest, most of small diameter, like trumpet vine, honeysuckle, and greenbrier, also known as smilax. The other larger diameter vine that you will frequently see is dark brown and shaggy. The bark is splintery and sloughs off, not hairy like and gray like the poison ivy. These vines are usually distant and hanging from the tree branches as opposed to clinging to the trunks. These are wild grape of the genus Phytus. The droops and berries of many of these vines are like a soft mast, fast food joint to birds and mammals alike. Bottomland hardwoods comprise 13% or almost 3 million acres in the Piedmont and coastal plain of Virginia and North Carolina. The volume of wood is 6.7 billion cubic feet, dominated by tupelo and maple, the bulk of which is from 50 to 75 years old. Harvesting in these areas requires specialized equipment due to the sensitive nature of the hydrology. Referred to as shovel logging, track machinery allows trees to easily be cut and placed to form a temporary trail. That will keep the skitter and logs from disturbing the soil, or more importantly, altering the hydrology. This way the trees can be removed in a sustainable fashion without degrading the site, creating sediment to surrounding running water, inhibiting regeneration, or creating a land type change. You can see from the data and from these pictures that the bottomland hardwood ecotype is driven by small changes not only in sunlight but in microsite water depth. Cypress and tupelo do not establish in the shade. Harvest plan during dry periods are needed in order to increase the percentage of cypress and tupelo regeneration. Saturated but not flooded areas within three months of seed fall is ideal for germination of cypress. If there is no disturbance, 
for instance, harvests, fire, or wind throw. Over time, natural forest succession drives the forest towards a maple-dominated ecosystem. Regeneration in this wet area faces enormous competition from herbaceous vegetation, vines, grasses, and reeds. So apart from stump sprouts, an occasional seed such as this pine has to find enough soil or decaying organic material to alight upon in order to establish roots and a long enough time period that it doesn't become inundated by water and completely drown. So these microsite factors, primarily driven by water depth and to some extent sunlight, create the enormous variability and thus rich diversity, which is characteristic of bottomland hardwoods. And please make sure that you join us again next Friday, May 22nd at noon, for an extraordinarily informative in session from Karen Snape on common invasive plants. You won't want to miss it. And don't miss out on so many other offerings from the Virginia Forest Landowner Education Program. It is our mission to do what we can to direct you to the information and resources that you need to enhance the value and most fully enjoy your forests.